All right, we're back. Uh, I forgot to restart recording for a few minutes, uh, but you didn't miss much if you're watching this on video. Uh, basically, what I said is I want to start moving some of the input processing and the dictionary lookup code. Uh, it was actually written and written in this originally written in assembly. It could have been written using this kind of fourth byte code hand compile style uh, thing we're using for most of the other words, but this is kind of legacy. This was one of the first things we wrote and it was all pure assembly. So uh, right now I'm looking at uh, redoing Word. And the first thing I'm looking at is writing a function called key, uh, whose job it is to read the next character from input. And um, uh, the, the, the built-in Word function never reads from standard input. So it can only read from the buffer, but obviously we want to have an interactive interpreter. And uh, as such, um, as such, what you uh, want basically, or uh, this is at least one way to do it, is that uh, there's an input buffer, which is what we bootstrap from when the system starts up. But if that buffer is exhausted, then um, if the buffer is exhausted, um, then uh, we, we do a get char to satisfy the request. Um, I think actually the way this should be written is we should factor this out. So there's a function called input uh, question mark, and it can be implemented however, um, you know, but the easiest way would be to, to just do, um, do this. So you're just loading the start pointer and the end pointer and you're checking, oh, and this should be not equal. We don't, if, if these are not equal, then there is input. Um, if there is a, oh yes, let's reverse this logic. If there is input, then um, grab from, read from the input pointer. Um, read one character from there, swap, increment. Uh, increment the input pointer and then write it back. Oh, and we don't need to swap because this consumes that value. But otherwise, if there's no input, then we do get char. And an alternate implementation is to always go through the the buffer. But because on the on the host side, all you know, we're using a line buffered terminal. Um, it's going to be line buffered on our side. So even though we use get char directly, we, we have line buffering on our side. So this is probably enough for now. If this was running uh, with a direct UART or something like that, that that's not buffered, that might be a problem. But um, so we have the ability to do backspace and stuff, uh, things like that, because it's line buffered. So anyway, um, if there's input, then we we read from that. Uh, and increment it, and that's it. Looks good to me. Otherwise, we get char. Actually, and uh, and let's uh, let's test this stuff first before we go much further. This is already potentially useful, but it requires us to requires us to have variables for the for this uh, these two input pointers um, and we can just I mean I mean we basically just need two variables or we, we need two functions that push these and and we maybe we could bootstrap that in a different way but um, not too bothered, to be honest. So uh, let's just create some some words for that. Um, and so this is really just um, a literal, which is input, and same thing for input end. So 
that right. Push the literal corresponding to those addresses and then exit. Looks good to me. And then input is read from that pointer, read from the end pointer. Um, and if they're not equal, then there is input. And then for the key function, do that. Okay, let's see if that compiles. <laughs> of course it doesn't. Just make sure. Did break something else before we get into the weeds. I'm almost certainly referring to like non-existent. Oh yeah, I think some of these. Yeah. There's actually a bunch of primitives we haven't defined. Um, let's just put this over to the side while we add those primitives. Um, don't want to do the full set right now, but um, Let's just do EQ. We can implement some of them in terms of each other if we want. Um, so T1 should be this, it should be that. Um, then we subtract them, and then we see if it's zero. We reduce the stack size by one. Just make sure this is right. First element, second element, subtract them, set t1 to 0, if t1 is 0. Decrement the stack, put that on top of the stack. All right. And let me just test it before I do not equal. And I mean, we could have implemented this ourselves using equal to 0. Um, Maybe we should, just for now. Do, 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 do. So two things are equal if their sum, if their difference is equal to zero. Two things are not equal if uh, their sum is not equal to zero. Just make sure that compiles. <laughs> Even that does not compile. Really on a roll here. Don't I have something called? Oh yeah, that's just bizarre. That is the wrong order. Well, oh, you could do this. Yeah, let's just do it that way. Okay, let's try this first. So that part compiles. Let's try this part. Compiles doesn't mean it works. Um, let's try Q. 
a. And so this should actually read the a. And so and push it on the stack if it works. Um, doesn't. <laughs> um, let's just try to do it. Zero. Actually, let's test the not the, the equal not equal stuff. So let's see. Are these things equal? They are not equal. Are these things equal? They should be equal. Are these things not equal? They should not be equal. Well, that's wrong. Wrong, wrong order. Prefix versus postfix. Okay. So let's see here. P key A. Actually, um, I guess does it skip prefix or postfix? I guess it would would read some. Let's try putting some space. No, I think this would work because it always the the word function always consumes the first piece of white space after the token, and so this should read a. Um, and so if I do put, well, first let's just see. It should be on the top of the stack. Uh, so I guess we could do break. Yeah, definitely doesn't work. Try to break some shit. Um, let's see. Is this right? Head of the pointer, read that character. Oh no, I have to dupe it. I have to dupe it. That's probably what's missing. So 97, what is 97? I guess it's, uh, is that really what I wrote? PA? It's supposed to be the ASCII code of whatever Oh, sorry, 97. Okay, that is A. So that is correctly reading it from that stream. Uh, 
Um, I mean, I guess you could do this as a dumb, uh, as a dumb trick. If I do something like this, then the top two elements should be like that. Yeah, so that's AB, six consecutive ASCII values. Um, all right, so that's at least working as far as that goes. Um, I need to check. All right, well that's already that's already progress. Um, I need to check that the get char stuff is actually kicking in when the buffer is exhausted, and I guess one way of doing that is. Um, If I just, no, because currently the interpreter is not using key, uh, so we would need to replace, yeah, that's why we need to replace the interpreter with something that uses our version of keys and we can actually read from, from get char. All right. Um, already, already, already. So yeah, that's where, I guess, where we were with our uh, word stuff. So, um, I think the way I want to do it, I think the way I want to do it is, uh, so we have to produce, well, at least in this version here, we fill in the word buffer. Um, and we don't have to use the one that, that we bootstrap from. We can just define our new, our new boot, uh, our new buffer. Um, and so I'm going to define a word buff, create word buff, um, and I guess I'm going to use this one as a helper. Um, create word buff, and so the we basically just have this thing here. Um, and then I guess we a lot like 256, which is what we had before. So we just say, you know, so, so, so what are we doing here? We create a new dictionary entry. It's called word buff. We use this same thing we use um, for the variable immediate word. The difference is we don't have to use this kind of quoting because this is not executing during compilation. It's executing at the top level in immediate mode. Um, and so this is going to push as a result of the overall thing. It's going to push the address of the subsequent word. And here I'm going to allot 256 bytes. So here we allotted basically one cell, which is four bytes by virtue of, uh, of the zero being emitted there as a placeholder. Here we're just going to make space. Um, so let's just make sure first off, I didn't blow up the world and I did. Um, Just had a typo. Create word buff. Um, if I just do this, it should work, right? So it's must be one of these other things. I hate these pop ups. All right. Um, the thing that's confusing is why even the act of allotting stuff is causing it. Oh, it's because 256. It's because we don't have literal parsing yet for uh, for anything this big. Um, so let me actually do that. That was something on the to-do list anyway. And it also reminded me of some other ops we should add. Um, OK. 
Okay. Um, let's make sure that assembles since we added some new the shift instructions and um, I'm going to so I think we had what was it we had literals we had literals um, first let me define some helpers here multiplying by powers of two. I guess we can do up to four. Let's do up to up to this. Um, and then we can just define a helper for now. We're going to use the general number parser in a bit uh, that handles everything, but um, just to get us started with this. 256 is, uh, I mean, this is kind of a funny way of doing it if you haven't seen it before, but if I multiply 1 by 8, uh, which just corresponds to left shifting 1 by 3 spots, um, that's one way of defining 8. Um, and then 256 we are going to define as um, 1 shifted by 8. So now we have all the ingredients. Let's make sure that still compiles. And um, now that we have that, we can create a word buffer. We can actually write 256. Um, All right, so now we have a buffer we can fill in, and um, when we call word buff as a word, we get the start pointer on top of the stack. And um, let's just remind myself of what this thing does in general. So yeah, I think what I want to do I have a destination pointer and I have the length so far. Actually, we can compute the length so far at the end by just subtracting from the beginning, which I think we saw what we did in the assembly code as well. Uh, so we just have a pointer and we don't, we're not gonna do buffer overflow because this is for no buffer overflow checks for the word buffer. And I think all you do is um, you, read the, you read a key uh, until Um, until the key is not blank. Let me think. We have to duplicate that, right? Um, so we read the next key. So we drop, mm, I guess maybe we need a different, we need a while, maybe a while loop structure, which we haven't implemented yet in order to do this cleanly. Um, let me think about that. Because you want to keep reading keys until you find one that isn't blank. So let's see. We could also have nested loops for that and just use exits to bail out. Maybe we'll do that. It's fine by me. So if not blank,
So get the next key. If it's not blank, then we start scanning for real and start putting stuff into the buffer. Uh, otherwise, we drop the key and repeat. So here we have, let's see, we have the um, we have the destination pointer on top. Uh, well, we had that on top of the stack, so now we have the key on top of the stack. And so basically, um, let me think about the right stack layout. You want to do you want to do this. You basically want to do this to write that key to the word buffer. We should just create a helper word, um, and it's going to have a stack effect that looks like this. Maybe we have to swap the top elements. Um, So that's going to be its effect. But you know, maybe it should be the other way around. I don't know. Now this is convenient. Maybe. Let's just try this order. And so what it's going to do is, oh, this is actually not convenient. Is it, let's see, if it's this order, um, it's okay to consume the data, but I have to, oh, this is the right order. So if I do over, um, over, and then plus one, right, because over pulls up the copy to the top, and then it's in the right order for C, C store, and then this leaves the original address and I can increment it. So I don't even need really a helper word for this. Um, so here we have another loop. And inside this loop, we have dust and key. in that order. And so we do over C store one plus and then read the next key. Until blank. And then here you drop an exit. Just read through that. So the destination address is there. Read the first key. If it's not blank, then repeatedly write that to the destination pointer, increment the destination pointer by one, get the next key, and continue doing that until you get a blank key. And once you have that, you drop the blank key and you exit. Um, it's probably not the simplest control flow structure that would work, but uh, it's what comes to mind. So in order to get this to work, we also need a function called blank. And it needs to... Um, Actually, I just remembered there is a trick. Let me just make sure this compiles, and then I'll. Um, there is a trick. Uh, you can define an immediate word called char, which is going to read the next words. This is going to use the existing word reader. Um, this is going to put a length and a uh, an address and a length. So we drop the length. And then we read the first character of the buffer. Um, 
And so this is a way And I guess you can also just look at it as an immediate version with key. So maybe that's just what I should be calling it. Um, since we already have key now, we can use our own shit other than keep creating dependencies on the built-ins. I think that's actually correct. Um, but this is immediate, meaning in any context, if I write this, I should get the ASCII value for... Um, no, is that right? I should get that as a literal, which means I want to um, right like that. Anyway, if you have this, you can now do stuff well. I guess that doesn't actually help with blanks because blanks have this property that you can't really. Or maybe you can. Yeah, I guess that actually works if we use key rather than word. I don't know if this works, but. Um... That would be pretty crazy if it did. So one space, which is going to be skipped by the tokenizer, then this, that should read the next character, which is a new line as the thing. Um, let's see if first of this compiles. And let us see what these values actually are. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, that is looks correct. At least 10 I know is space, or rather 10 is new line. Uh, I guess 32 is space, so that actually worked. That's kind of crazy, but I will take it. Um, th th this is more sort of natural for other values. Like if I write char a, this will basically compile to a literal corresponding to the ASCII value of a. Uh, the, these blank things are uh, new line things are a little bit uh, more tricky because you know the white space is significant here. It's a little bit nuts, um, and but anyway, then we can implement blank according to our original definition of what a blank character is, right? Which means like a space or a new line. Um, we can check for that by um, you know, first uh, checking whether we're equal to um, to a blank, uh, and then swap. Or if we're equal to a new line, and then doing or. And um, we can test this by doing it's called test blank. It has to execute in compile mode in order to do the right thing, I guess. Um, so that's one, it is a blank. If it's a new line, that should also be a blank. But if I have like an A, that is not a blank. Okay, so let's say that works. Um, okay, let's go back to this. So we have a word buffer. Read a key. Oh, 
oh, this is not quite right. We have to return the length as well. Um, so on top of this, we have uh, we have the word buffer. So let's duplicate this and uh, let's get word buffer and let's subtract it. And that is, I think, uh, now we're like that. Something like this. Um, make sure it compiles. Okay, let's try reading it. Um, let's get foo. I'm going to break after. Um, and so I would expect to see on top of the stack, you know, the pointer to the word buffer. Oh, actually, that's true. You always want to report, return the start pointer. So um, we do drop the latest character, um, but um, word buff word buff minus. Actually, I guess you can, if you want, you can leave it at the bottom. So the start pointer is always at the bottom, and then the floating destination pointer is above that. Uh, and then when you're done, you can do over minus, which I think will do the right thing. Anyway, let's see if that works. Low probability, but let's try it. Okay, so this is not stalling in an infinite loop, but it also doesn't seem to ever be returning. Let me just verify that's what's happening by doing a put digit before. Yeah, so it's it's executing this, but uh, never, never seemingly exiting. Uh, X-wing this loop. So anyway, we have these two pointers on top of the stack. Um, let's put this on each iteration, just to make sure that stuff is at least executing. Okay. This is still not executing as much as I would expect. No, I guess that maybe is about right. Um, so anyway, get the next key. So I guess this thing is never, this thing here is never executing. No, oh, that is executing. Interesting. Um, let's number these progress points. Zero, one. Oh, I don't have an exit because I'm a moron. But let's put in these progress markers anyway. Okay. Okay, that actually looks reasonable. So foo has length three. And if foo was like foo bar, then you would expect to see um like six um so that's pretty good um let's go and redefine interpret again
by the way, for a lot of this stuff, we could use vectored execution. Um, we're basically, rather than always hard coding a direct call to interpret, we could have a function pointer essentially that we always jump through. Um, that might be the way to do it now that I think about it. Um, I guess that's what defer is, among other things. Which in fourth you have to use for mutual recursion because of it's a single pass compilation scheme and the fact that it doesn't do back batching for that sort of thing. Um, but you know what? Um, just to be lazy, we can just copy and paste this uh, again. And um, I'll do the vectored execution in a sec or later. But um, the idea is that now that we have a new word function, um, we should be able to do our interpreter that uses that. So now word is not using the built-in word, it's using our word, find is still built, built in, execute is built in, a few other things are built in, but um, this should now be less dependent on the original uh, built-ins. So right now this should work as before, which it doesn't, so fuck that. Um, actually, before we get that far, there's all kinds of things that could be wrong, corner cases. Let me write a function to print a string. Um, I'm trying to remember what that's usually called. Type. Yeah, I think it's called type. Um, so we're going to have um, it's going to be something like this. And uh, we are going to, let's see, swap, no, over, um, I guess there's different ways you could do it, over, uh, read from that address, put char the address, um, decrement the length, swap, increment the address, swap, and you do that until the length is zero. Once you exit this loop, you still have those things on the stack. Do we have two drop? I guess we don't, so we could define this. It's a helper right here. We don't have comments, which I should probably define as well. I think that's right. Let's see here. Um, grab the address, read from it, uh, do the put char. Uh, decrement the length, uh, increment the address, swap back, check whether uh, the length is zero, and if it is, then we're done, then we drop these two things. First, let's see if that compiles. Um, now let's try doing word foo type. Okay, that works. Types foo. Um,
Um, right. So what what were we um, what were we doing here? We were trying to redefine the interpreter. And then this is what, do, do I need to first of all, I don't think you need to do this. Yeah. Um See if that works. Okay, that doesn't seem to work, but um, do we have two dupe? Okay, that's actually built in. Let's, um, I guess we'll just use that for testing. All right. Um, anyway, basically what I want to do here is I want to to dupe and I want to type um, just so we can see what words are being read, if any, when we're doing this stuff. By the way, if we don't do this abort, I don't think anything should happen. Um, so it's only when we abort, which means we'll re-enter the new interpreter. This quit abort will go here. This will reset both stacks. This will go into uh, the quit interpretation loop. This will go into the new thing here. And this thing. Um, and we can print a new line after every thing, by the way. So type that. Um, and then I guess put char. It is called put char, right? Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay, that's good. It looks like it's the new line that's the problem before it's hanging. I mean, it could be other weird stuff, but let's see. So we have our new word. Oh, did I quit? That was not my intention. Oh, I gotcha. The problem is uh, we're using old, I mean, I still wouldn't expect that to interfere the way it's doing. Maybe it does, um, because the original create, okay. I mean, we can do that. Let's go. I can redefine this too. So I was planning on doing the bootstrapping at some point anyway, but um, let's do it. Let's make sure the code is right. So, redefine create. trying to see what else uses word or create because those will all have the same issue 
So it's only interpret, which we've replaced, and create itself, which is built in. Okay, that's good. Probably the longer term solution is to make all of those things be vectored, and so we can just rewrite a function pointer to point to our new updated versions, maybe. But um, let's try this. Um, let me make sure this stuff is right as well. So to create a new entry, we read the first word, it defines the name, we record the start of where we are, we write the flags as zeros, uh, we write the link pointer as the current value of the latest pointer, and then we update this to point to here, which is from, from up here in the beginning. Um, then from word, which is from before this was pushed, so this, this here was consumed here, we have uh, a word from up there, which is a, you know, a length and an address on top of the stack. And so we duplicate the length and we write that as a byte. And then um, we record where we are here. Then we do over, which is going to grab the length. Um, we allot that many bytes. Uh, and then we do a C move. So this copies from the word buffer into the new entry. Then we align to four bytes and we emit the code field do call. Um, this is pretty scary. It seems to work. Let me just make sure this thing is actually executing for these new uses like vari uh, variable and constant. Um, Digit. Okay. Uh, so this is using the new word. Um, and now if I do abort, maybe this will work. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, oh, right, we have to do, redefine colon as well. The fun never stops, um, but that's fine. Oh yeah, and the fun thing is we can, <laughs> uh, I love this kind of circularity. This is the meta circularity thing that I know, I love. So <laughs> we use colon, the old colon to define the new colon. And um, the way it works is we do create. We set the mode, which you can do this way. No, that's not right. Those are immediate words. That's not what we want. Um, this is some inception shit. We're going deep.
it still seems to be using the old colon. No, that is not really true, I think. Um, but basically what I would expect to see is when we do the abort here, it's going to re-enter the new interpreter in a loop and it's going to you know read the next word and we're going to type it out and, and all this stuff. Um, Oh, I should mention uh, one very common thing is a function called CR for carriage return, which just uh, prints, a, prints a new line. So I should probably do that. Um, right, so it's printing every word it reads as part of interpretation, not as part of other stuff. So I guess let me do this. Um, in Word, I'm going to put a one put digit. Um, and in interpret, I'm going to put. Oh, here. So we can see when it's reading a word. One, one. Um, okay, let me, no, actually, let me do it here. Um, let me say to, to do type CR. So we do it here and then we do it also in the interpreter. Uh, it means I need to put type higher up, but that's fine by me. Um, and you know, I'll also type it there just to, so there's two spots. So then we'll see stuff repeated if it's parsed for interpretation, but if it's parsed for some other reason like create, we'll only see it once. just when I rotated the definitions. Let's see what I did. Okay. So colon, read by word and then read right after by the interpreter. Uh, the variable part is um, right there. Um, so, okay. So now we've confirmed that that what I expect. So variable is not read by the interpreter, it's read by the colon. Um, so it gets to this point, and then seemingly it never makes it here, which is interesting. Like, let me try making it something different. Just to, don't want to do a deep debugging. Let me just, yeah, so it just straight up never gets that far. Oh, I see. It's because this thing here also uses that. Uh, 
Ugh, why is it doing this regular expression shit? Oh, right, it's because of Ka. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. Um, I think this has to become vectored. What time are we doing? Bit an hour. I think the right way to do this is to make all, is to make word and find be vectored so that there's a function pointer in direction, because otherwise it's too hard to go and update these old copies. Um, I mean, you could, like, you can literally. Actually, I guess that's not too bad because it's this. I'll be, but anything. Now, this is an immediate word, so anything that uses this has already been defined. Um, okay, let's just improve forces for now. Then I'll clean up. Um, all right, yeah. Um, tick is word find CFA. That's the definition of tech. This will now resolve to the new word. And this will then compile in a reference to the new thing, and so on and so on. OK, if we cut further. Um, variable, let's see. got the variable part Um, I've reached the variable part, the comma for that, and then there's supposed to be the zero, um, but I guess it never gets there. Comma is a very basic word, right? Um. All right. If I made this like zero, I just want to see what the parser does. Maybe it's like, no. So that's definitely not the issue. The issue could be that the appending, the interpreter is handling this. It's an Um,
Let me uh, print an X every time something is compiled. I just want to see. Right, so create is a normal thing. Oh, right, right. So it reads, let's see. It, read, it reads that word, which is variable. And that's why we see it printed. And then uh, we look it up and we get that. And uh, we append it. And all of this happens at compile time. So it, we, we see two commas, which is it in the wrong mode? I wonder. Yeah. Okay. Probably that's the issue, right? Uh, no, so it is mode zero. It is mode zero. Comma is really not supposed to be an immediate word, and that it's, uh, there's no way that is actually the case. That's either memory scribble or uh, the, the logic is wrong. So before we do anything else, let's check that. Um, let's check, what is it, uh, comma, immediate, put digit. Let's see if that works. Really? Thanks. Oh. Yeah, comma is not an immediate word. Mode should not be non-zero. I 
this should be one, just to make sure that there's both a positive and a negative in the door. No, oh, this isn't one either. So that's one. Zero. Okay, so there's nothing. I don't know, this gives the code pointer. So you, uh, oh, that's my bad. That's not the correct way to do it. Um, Uh, word Oh, I guess that's a problem because it does that as a side effect um. Okay. Is that the other two? I guess I have to do find. Okay, so that is immediate. This is what I would expect. But comma is not immediate. Um. Let's see here. Char i put char, char colon put char. Just to make it easier to see. Yeah, so that's the part that's really baffling. The fact that it's trying to execute comma as an immediate. Um, like, did the mode get fucked up? Is that why? So the mode is zero, so that can't be it. Um, So it's 
to my markers on this debug output so we can distinguish it. So w colon is for the word function. And it somehow thinks, it somehow thinks So the mode is zero, which means we're emphatically not in immediate mode. And so it really must think Let me just make sure the stack is in a good state. So this is, uh, right, this, the, the same stuff is on the stack, which is correct, because it should have duplicated anything it needed. So that is not the issue. Word find dupe. Convert to that. Let's set that over there. That feels like a memory clobbering somehow. Because, like, how the fuck could comma... start to lose the plot a little bit. I may need to stop. Let me give it another five minutes to see if I can get any ideas. So yeah, it definitely is the fact that somehow comma oh, that makes no sense. So here, here it's not considering an immediate. Um, let me try something a little bit. Um, but first, make sure that compiles. This will be useful for debugging. Okay. Um, now I am going to let's do it and quit. It doesn't matter where, it's just something that gets executed. Um, I'm going to. Um, word hello 
to literal type. No, that doesn't work because it uses a temp buffer. Never mind. Um, What in the ever-living fuck? So you can see as plain as day that at this point when we read you know the comma we have it up here read the comma find the dictionary entry check whether it's an immediate entry um I don't really need this um you say no it's not it's not an immediate word. Look up the comma, boom, boom, boom. But somehow, you know, here's the easy way to, to check whether we're even looking at the same shit. Let me set a breakpoint here so I can see what the dictionary entry is, uh, the address, and I guess the problem is there's too much. But anyway. So it says it's zero here, but then when it gets it later in the stream and it looks at the entry in the interpreter, it thinks it's one. Um, so let's reason about it. It could be that somehow there's a bug here, but that seems unlikely. Find is the same old find we've always used. Duplicate the top entry. Uh, get the code, code field address. Swap back, so now we have the original dictionary entry. Let's just ignore this debug stuff. Um, check whether it's immediate or if the mode is non zero. All right, suppose it was a memory clobbering somehow. And actually, let's say we take all of this stuff out, which has to do with immediate mode. Um, let's just see if this old infinite loop works.
yeah, I mean, it has the same problem where it thinks stuff is immediate that isn't. Like, it thinks get digit is immediate, then it calls it, and it gets stuck. Um, This buffer is so big now, there's like no, there should be no chance in hell we're actually. Yeah, it's 64K. Okay, so that's that input buffer, but then the other side of it is this. I mean, I don't think that's it, but let's just completely eliminate the possibility. Um, yeah. All right. This is probably going to be something dumb. For example, maybe maybe this create stuff is slobbering things. Let me just create that again. So we only use we use commas. So this is the flags field. We read the latest field. Um, So that um, write the, the the length as a byte, which is at this point on top of the stack. Record the destination. Um, Grab the length from right under there. A lot that many bytes. Swap to bring the length to the top and the destination below. Then align to a four byte boundary and append a reference to do call. Let me see what we're doing, if there's anything that's actually different than the original. Latest load comma, latest store, dupe C comma, here, over, a lot, swap, C move, align, do call, comma, exit. And the exit is implicit because of the semicolon here, so we don't have to do that. All right, I think I am at my wit's end for now. Um, let 
we should really break out the memory window and uh, start to. I mean, that's not shouldn't be too hard, right? Because uh, what is it? Alt. Oh, we would alt one, alt two, three, four, five, six. Just assembly. Oh no. Yeah, six is memory. Anyway, I'll do some. Maybe I'll do this off stream. But anyway, yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out. I'm sorry we get, didn't get to the end of some of this bootstrapping stuff. I assume this is pretty hard to follow. Um, I promise once I get to a satisfactory spot, uh, this will be something I will kind of write up in a structured way um, because I'm still figuring some of it out as well. But uh, this is extremely addictive to tinker with, so I'll have to put it down eventually. But yeah. Um, uh, next session we will do the assembly tutorial, the structured assembly tutorial, and uh, assuming I get this into a good state by then, I'll probably do a demo of it the time after that on Friday. And uh, then I think we will probably go to hardware design starting next week. That's what I was planning on doing. So that will be a move to some Python stuff um, for uh, the HDL stuff we'll be doing. So uh, see everyone then, and uh, see everyone next time for the assembly tutorial. Uh, until then.